I would like first to welcome our featured speaker, Mr. Mark Burns, President, Gulfstream Aviation Corporation, and a Vice President of General Dynamics. It's an honor to be here today. It's a privilege to get the chance to speak with you. I get a lot of chances uh, to speak, as you would imagine. Uh, it's typically about Gulfstream, or, or now as the chairman of uh, Gamma, along with Pete, uh, the opportunity to advocate for industry issues. Uh, and then more recently, because of some of the development work we've done to speak about innovation uh, and the things that we are doing. I love that video for the reasons that it calms me down, but also that I think it kind of personifies what the industry has done and the technology. It emphasizes the excitement around aviation and the things that we have done uh, to make airplanes safer, more reliable, and actually more desirable. Uh, so we're excited about that. There's an old saying that, that we often overestimate what we can do in a year, but far underestimate what we can do in a decade. Uh, I think that holds true for aviation. Some of the th things that we have done over the last decade are truly amazing. They are differentiators in this marketplace uh, for us, and we're excited to be able to show some of those products uh, around the world. I've been here for, for quite some time, as you heard from the, the distinguished statesman. That actually used to be called the elder statesman. So I don't, I'm not sure how to take that, quite honestly. Uh, but it is, it is an honor on behalf of all Gulfstream employees uh, to be recognized for that innovation work that we have done, uh, particularly over the last couple of decades. If you think about just this last decade, we have developed three totally new airplanes, not derivatives of something we've done in the past, but airplanes that are truly unique uh, and technologically advanced, as Howard pointed out in the beginning. G650 was the beginning of a journey for us uh, that will take us decades into the future. G500 and 600 simultaneous uh, development have just put incredible opportunities in front of us to develop new technologies, new airplanes. And when you're doing that, one of the things you have to do is to ensure that you're making mature designs. New designs, but mature designs. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, as we go along today. So I will try to be uh, quick. Uh, I know you all didn't bring your sunblock, uh, so I will try to keep uh, this to a minimum. I have a number of of things I'd like to show you. Gulfstream today, so we're about 18,000 employees. I will tell you the year I started, we were under 1,000 people. Uh, so it's very gratifying uh, to walk through our factories every day and see the, the smiling faces of the people that are building and designing these airplanes. You know, when I started, it was predominantly a U.S. market. There were a few airplanes here in Western Europe, but it was predominantly a, a U.S. market. In some ways, it was a uh, east coast of the U.S. market, but it has changed dramatically. The growth around the world, the new customers being introduced to aviation uh, is rapidly increasing. So I talk about uh, product excellence and, and the rigor uh, of design and the innovation that we put forth. I believe this is kind of the cornerstone uh, of who Gulfstream is. It is innovation for the sake of the customer and making sure that we're focused on things that make a difference for the people that we sell airplanes to. This is the product lineup. We have all the airplanes uh, here this week and we're excited to show those off, particularly uh, the G600, which we're uh, getting close to certification, so we're excited to have that airplane here this week. This new design uh, that started with the G650 of efficient high-speed travel really is something that, that we've focused significantly on for over a decade now, and it really proves itself, not just in the very immediate uh, thing that you would think of, and that is that it saves people time, but it's also safer. It's also less expensive. It does a lot of things for customers and their cost of operation, their long-term ownership, residual value. All the hours that we save also go back into these things, not just saving them time personally, but also the benefit of the cost of operation. We did, uh, we did a record recently uh, from Teterboro to
to Dubai, and it really shows the efficiency of the airplane. You can see the, the time and speed here. It uh, is an advancement uh, in technology for us that started with the 650. We've done over 80 speed records now on 650. We've done 30 on G500 now. It's just a, a huge uh, advance forward as far as efficiency and use of the product. But it's not all about speed. Obviously, what we do has to be flexible. Our people that, that buy products from us want the flexibility of going wherever they want in the world uh, and being able to demonstrate that flexibility in short fields and steep approach uh, and things of that nature is a hugely important, not just how fast we are, but by how flexible the product may be. So this is a new era for us. Um, we've spent uh, a great deal of time since 2014 when we announced G500 and G600 to this point where we started delivering the airplanes last, uh, last summer. We're uh, al almost up to 20 airplanes in service now since we met last time at eBase. We certified the airplane uh, and uh, started delivery. Very soon we will get certification of the, uh, the G600 as well and start those deliveries this year. So we're excited about this new era. Uh, it is a huge investment in technology. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the technology that went into building these airplanes. So I talked about G600. Uh, we're in the very final throes of uh, the function and reliability testing. We should wrap up here very soon. Uh, we are working closely with the FAA to get this done and excited about delivering this incredible new airplane that has even exceeded our expectations as far as performance. So when we started out uh, to design this airplane, we knew that we were gonna be the very first one in a lot of particular areas. So active control side sticks is a first for our industry. The data concentration network that's on 500 and 600, it is a wireless internet, if you will, that aggregates computers throughout the airplane into a single source uh, that gives our pilots more information at their fingertips, easier to use. So it's a very first uh, in our industry. We're also uh, the very first airplane to certify using the ODA. So we were fully certified under the ODA. We were actually the very first ODA uh, for the FAA back in 2008. So we've been at this process for a long time. We understand it very well. It's a very thorough process. I think it's created and delivered some of the, the safest airplanes that, that we have ever built, certainly the most technologically advanced airplanes we've ever built. Proud of this technology. Um, you know, we, we were, uh, have been looking at side stick controls almost for a decade before we ever really started in earnest to put it in an airplane mainly because we believed passive control was not the safest mode to go. Um, we felt like active control was important. Uh, we worked on it for many years. This is the first airplane in our industry with active control. We believe it makes a difference. Uh, we've had several awards because of this technology. Uh, it is a true advancement uh, in safety uh, of aircraft. The symmetry flight deck was really uh, a labor of love for Colin Miller and the, the, the flight team to make sure that we made the flight deck user friendly for our, for our pilots, uh, to give them more information at their fingertips, but easier access to the information that they need, need each and every day. This has been a true uh, step forward for us as well. All touch screens uh, in, the, um, in the operation, we have a if you want to go to my uh, or gulfstream.com, there's a 11 part series on how Symmetry Flight Deck was uh, developed. It's truly intriguing. It talks to our early engineers, our uh, early uh, uh, first flight pilots, and how it evolved uh, in the technology that was used and some of the conventional and unconventional ways that, that we use to, uh, to develop this technology. So I talked about certifying new airplanes. So you, you take things like active control side stick and touch screens and autonomous control systems for safety uh, in the airplane, data concentration networks. When you do technology of that nature, you also have to look at how you're gonna certify that technology and how you're gonna make it 
so that it's useful to the customer. So the ways we certified airplanes in the past and the way we developed technology needed to change. Uh, so we set out to develop an R&D lab that took all of those different systems and how we build airplanes, not just the mechanical side of the airplane, but how that airplane interfaced with the interior, how systems worked, how reliable they were. We re literally spent uh, over 100,000 test hours of actual operation of aircraft systems prior to the airplane being built. We spent over 35,000 hours simulated flying of the airplane before we ever lifted off for the very first time. This way is the way to develop new technology, but ensure that it's mature when you deliver it to a customer. I'm very proud of the, the effort of our team uh, to develop these technologies. We talked about uh, uh, our commitment as an industry to being good stewards of what we've been given during uh, lunch. And one of the ways that we've done that is through uh, sustainable fuels. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit in just a second. But we did a, a recent record on our 280 from, uh, from Savannah to Van Nuys, all on alternative fuels. I think we have the responsibility as an industry to continue to advocate for this fuel and, and the safety of that, uh, that component. And the last of the airplanes that we brought uh, today, an iconic airplane for us, the G550, uh, we continue to build uh, the G550. It's a, it's a very uh, uh, great performing airplane, great value in the marketplace uh, for us today, uh, and still the, the holder of over 50 speed records around the world. It also gives us uh, an incredible platform to build special missions airplane, and Lita Chong is with us today and uh, runs our government relations. I don't think we've ever been as busy as we are today with special missions uh, requests from around the world, not just for uh, communications airplanes or, or battlefield surveillance, but also medevac airplanes. Medevac airplanes are becoming more prevalent uh, as governments look to increase their, their, their reach around the world. Uh, this is one that we built for Beijing 999. You know, medevac airplanes used to be about evacuating somebody to uh, a facility where they could be, uh, their life could be saved or they could be treated. These airplanes have evolved to actual being the operating room. Uh, so it's not just about evacuating a patient to a facility, it's about actually life-saving moments uh, on the airplane. And this has been one that we've developed in concert with several of our vendors but it is truly an operating room in the sky. So as we, as we talk about uh, building airplanes, I had a chance um, probably about a year and a half ago to speak at the Royal Aeronautical Society in London. And this young man was in the front row and he asked me in my long career, and so I didn't like him from the start because he's making me older than, than I wanted to be. Um, but he said, what's changed the most? And I, I think it's this. I think it's what you're looking at. It's the precision with which airplanes are built today. Uh, it enables us to do things like enhance the speed of the airplane, uh, reduce drag and weight. Uh, we can literally build a wing with zero defects. Uh, it, it is a truly amazing step forward. You know, when I started, the airplanes were largely hand-built. Uh, today we can build airplanes almost flawlessly. It's, it's absolutely amazing opportunity. All of that stuff, all those labs and robots and everything uh, make a difference, but it truly is about uh, our workforce. We have an incredible workforce uh, dedicated to our customer. Uh, we are very customer centric. We talk about it uh, consistently. What are we delivering to the customer? Are the, is the quality the right level of quality? Is it the right product? Uh, for our customers, we do a lot of uh, customer advisory board interactions that give us the guidance we need, but it does come down to our people uh, and their commitment to our customer. You know, so if I stopped at this point and said, okay, you know, what does Gulfstream do? You could probably tell me based on what you knew and what, I, what I've shown you. If I said, how does Gulfstream do it, you could probably come up with the answer as well. Uh, I think the real tricky one is, 
Why do we do what we do? And this is the hard part, uh, but it really goes back to that customer. How do we differentiate the products and the services that we have? And I think it's because our endeavor as a company is to create every moment that, that our customers are using our airplanes, something that is memorable to them uh, and that it's reliable and, it, again, it's mature. So the why is because we're committed to the customer. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we could build a 1,000 a week if we wanted to, but if nobody wanted to buy any of them, uh, we really wouldn't have a product. So it is about the commitment to our customer. So again, one of, the, one of the real cornerstones of that commitment is our service network. We talked about that uh, at lunch as well. It has been an integral part of our uh, vision for the future for uh, at least the three and a half decades that I've been with Gulfstream. The commitment to the customer is real. Uh, it is something that I do every day. I have a number of my colleagues here. I'll tell you one of the first things I do every morning is read uh, feedback from our customers about how they feel uh, we're doing from a support standpoint or how our products are performing. I believe it's that important to, uh, to know what your customer feels about the experience. We've invested heavily uh, in product support for a long, long time. Uh, we're building two new service facilities uh, at our largest sites in Appleton, Wisconsin and Savannah, Georgia right now. We'll open those uh, very shortly this year. We have a, a new facility going up in Van Nuys, California. Uh, this year, and we just broke ground on two new facilities, the largest of which will be at Farnborough. Uh, it will be the largest facility we've ever built outside of the U.S. Uh, over 200,000 square feet give us the capability to grow far beyond the 200,000 square feet uh, at the site. So we're excited about that, as well as a recent groundbreaking that we did down in West Palm Beach, Florida. You know, it's easy to say you're 24 hours a day, but when you're in the business we are in uh, and uh, your, uh, your customers have great expectations of you, uh, you've asked them to have great expectations of you, it's important uh, and incumbent that you be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day uh, of every year. Uh, we've made a huge investment in that uh, technology as well. Uh, the airplanes today uh, the fidelity of the information coming off the airplanes in flight actually goes into our call center. Uh, the team there can evaluate the health of the airplane and make good decisions to help our customers have a reliable experience. So this is a, a truly big step, uh, step forward in support for us. So I think, uh, as we discussed during lunch as well, I think as leaders in this industry, it's important for us to advocate for the industry that has done so much for us, not just Gulfstream, but all of us. Uh, and I make, uh, I make it a point of every time I, I get an opportunity to speak, I'll always uh, speak at the end about advocacy. Um, more to implore all of us to do what we can uh, to talk about some of the things that uh, Howard was referring to earlier. Sustainable fuels. Um, we have been working with sustainable fuels for some time. I believe it's an important for us to be a leader in this regard uh, in that uh, sustainable fuels really are something we committed as an industry many years ago to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, every airplane that we've designed over the last two decades has become more efficient, uh, more aerodynamic, less noise emissions. Uh, so this is one of those steps forward. We have done almost a million flight hours now. We use sustainable fuels in our corporate airplanes, in our flight test airplanes, in our customer service airplanes because we want to be a leader in this regard. We just started actually selling it for consumers, uh, for our customers uh, recently at two of our sites. Uh, I think there's obviously some things we need to do with supply and the pricing. But I, I believe there's demand there, and I believe it's up to us to continue to be a leader uh, in, this, in this regard. And as Howard pointed out, I think we all have a responsibility. We've been given a lot uh, as an industry. The growth uh, in just my short uh, career, see how I threw the short career in there. Um, the, um, I think we owe it to uh, the next generation to be prepared. Uh, and it is something we focus on a great deal within Gulfstream. I know many of you do throughout your business, but we have a responsibility
to give the, the next generation the tools that they need to be able to lead us forward. And as, as you looked at what we were doing, I, you know, airplanes, again, largely hand-built um, 35 years ago. Very different way of building airplanes today. The training's different. The schools have to be different. We have to advocate for the workforce that we need, but we also need to help them prepare to be able to be ready for the next uh, generation. So mercifully, uh, this is the last slide. Um, so I will tell you, um, again, I, I believe uh, strongly that uh, it's important for us as a company to be a leader in this industry. And I think the best uh, and most important way to do that is to lead with integrity, uh, to make sure that, that we keep our promises. Uh, if we say an airplane will deliver on time that, that, uh, or when it will deliver, that we do that on time. Uh, whether it's a new airplane or a service airplane or a, uh, a part, uh, it's important for us uh, to deliver on time. We talk about these, these five things you see here uh, quite frequently in-house. We all advocate for this business that's been so good to us. Uh, important that we remain disciplined. Uh, disciplined not only in how we build airplanes, but how we sell airplanes. Uh, we need to advocate for the things that I know make uh, our company better, and that is truly the discipline uh, of building and selling airplanes and servicing airplanes. And then lastly, we need to be focused on the customer. I know I said that a lot of times uh, throughout the, the presentation, but I believe that is the cornerstone of what has made us successful uh, as a company, uh, understanding the customer, evolving with the customer, being prepared to help the customer in whatever their endeavor may be, but being there uh, for the customer at all times, I believe is important. So with that, I will thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here.